Hi everybody and welcome back to our Today TWF channel. In today's video, we'll see what Mark, one of my long-time subscribers from Canada, sent to me. Okay, we have some chips. A Moss 6522 and a strange looking 6502. Then we have an 82S100 PLA marked C64A and the smart chip is a TTL74LS08 which is good for future repairs. And last, Mark sent two EPROMs. But these are not very common ones as they are two MCM68766 ones that are pink compatible with the 24-pin 8KB ROMs like the ones used in the VIC-20, the C64 and the early 1541 disk drives. So a big thanks to Mark and now let's see better each of these items one by one. To read and test the EEPROMs, I'll use my Data I.O. 2900 device program that is making the loud fan noise in the background. So let's select the right device part number and let's read the content into the device program RAM. With a quick look at what we read, we can definitely conclude that this one is not erased. Now I'm trying to compare the content of the second EEPROM with what has been read from the first one, and they are definitely different. I have transferred the content of the two EEPROMs to a couple of files in my laptop and searched for strings, is what I found. Unfortunately, none of the strings seem referring to a brand or device name that I could recognize. So if anyone has a clue, please leave a message in the comment section. Anyway, I archived the original content of the two EEPROMs so they can be erased and ready to be programmed the next time I need to substitute a 24-pin Commodore ROM. It's time now to read the 82S100 PLA, so let's select the new device type on the program. Some time ago I made a video where I had to reconstruct the fuse map of a C64 PLA since I couldn't find a good dump compatible with my program. So now I can finally obtain a dump from a real 82S100 and see if it's different or not from what I have. Ok, the checksum already rings a bell, but I'll check in the saved files for the reconstructed dump. Here is the file I had reconstructed from two different ones. As you can see, the fuse checksum 7F. 5D is the same obtained on the dump, so finally I have verified it's exactly matching the real one. But that's not all. The PLA Mark sent has a 1982 date code, so it's a perfect match for my C64 Revision A PCB that was missing the original PLA. So here it is in its final place. Really a great gift, Mark. Thank you. The last two chips that Mark sent are a MOS 6522 and a strange looking MOS 6502. Now, the 6522 looks exactly as it should. It has the correct font, ink color and it was tested by Mark. 
So I have no doubt it's an original chip. The 6502 instead is marked with an incorrect font. It doesn't have the typical moss silverish white font and it also has an impossible date code. A date code of 3438 could mean it was made in 1934 or 1938 maybe. Anyway, it also was tested by Mark and it probably behaved correctly as a 6502. But, as we are going to see, not all that behaves as a 6502 is in fact a 6502. In the following comparisons I will use also this other chip that was donated by another viewer not so long ago. This one has a better looking font, but the marking color isn't quite right. Also, an exercised eye will notice that the font isn't exactly the usual one we find in genuine MOS technology chips of that year. On the comparison will be made using a genuine but dead MOS 6502A that I had to substitute when repairing a Commodore 1571 disk drive. First of all, I tried some paint remover on a Q-tip. Any genuine chip will not leave any paint on the Q-tip. Most fake chips have instead been repainted, as in this case. And the other chip is even worse. For your information, you can also use acetone for this test. Now, let's look at the three chips together. We notice that the case is enough different. For example, the size and the shape of the chip notch is different in each one. One chip has a dot indicating pin number one, and the original MOS one doesn't have the dot. Also, the two remarked chips show two injection holes that are not present in the MOS 6502. Let's look now at the bottom side. Most not remarked chips have markings also on the bottom side, as we can see on the genuine 6502. On the other two, any marking has been sanded away, and they didn't bother trying to put any new markings there. Now, let's see if we can identify with a multimeter at least what kind of family each of the unknown chips belonged. Of course, I'll compare the readings with the genuine MOS 6502. I already know that one of the chips is some different brand of the NMOS 6502 and the one mark sent is instead some kind of a CMOS 65 CO2. All tests have been done with the multimeter in diode mode, so it shows a voltage drop of bipolar junction if present. We first check the pinout on the 6502 pin 1 and pin 21 are both uh, ground connections so they must be connected together this is the original one so there is continuity this is the first unknown rebadged and of course it has continuity also this one and this is the suspect uh, CMOS well We'll see later why I do suspect, why I really know, because I did the tests before. But anyway, it has the correct pinout, 1 and 21 are connected together. So this is a kind of 6502. Now the second test uh, that really gives us a good indication is to check the VDT and ground pins with the red uh, probe on the pin number 8 which is the VDD so 1, 2, 3 and we read something like less than 1 volt on the original one on this one, well almost the same 0 0.8 so this is a good candidate to be um, an NMOS 2. On the CMOS 1 instead, when we probe pin 8 uh, to ground, uh, we have a much larger value. And it always goes away to more than 2 volts. This, the limit of this chip multimeter is 2 volts. So we have a brief indication, then nothing. Let's try again. 3, 8. Yeah, it 
charge it okay here it is and it goes away so this is a really a difference a big difference but there is an al also another very big difference that I'm going to show right now for this test we want to use the black uh, probe the negative probe on the pin number 8 which is always uh, the VDD to check for protection diodes on the various pins so pin 8 again and we start on the other side the pin 40 which is the reset and we have nothing 39 should uh, show something because it's uh, a clock output also if we check pin 3 we find the same thing because it is the, old, the other clock output but if we probe on the other pins we find absolutely nothing oh, ok only if we go to the ground pin of course and here the same 7, 8 so 39 we have something and nothing on the rest but if we check now the CMOS one or if we suspect it CMOS we have indications on every pin even the ones that should not be connected on uh, the normal and most uh, version of the 6502 so we see also this is the data bus and we have one diode drop on each of the data bus so it's indicating uh, protection diodes on all the pins which is typical of the CMOS circuits so, to summarize, when getting a remarked 6502 chip, it's usually easy to understand if it's really a 6502 variant and even if it's an NMOS or CMOS version. The problem with CMOS chips is that they have redesigned and upgraded version with respect to the original NMOS design. For instance, they all have additional instructions and the famous illegal or undocumented instructions don't work anymore. There may also be timing difference on some instruction between NMOS and CMOS chips. So a CMOS chip could not work properly on some systems intended to operate with the NMOS 6502. It is possible to identify the particular CMOS version by using programs that test for the added of codes on the different types that have been made. The NMOS 6502 should instead be all interchangeable but it's not easy to tell what was the original speed grade of the chip, if all the original markings have been sanded away. It is also not straightforward to retest an NMOS 6502 for its maximum reliable clock frequency. That's all for this video. I hope it was interesting and useful. If you have any question, please use the comment section down below. Again, a big thanks to Mark for sending the chips, and thank you everyone for watching.